The IKEA device is upgraded and glowing nice green color behind me. It's measuring not only the particles, but uh, also CO2. And uh, I can also see it in Home Assistant dashboard and I can see the value so I can trigger automations. Hey, what's up? This is Václav. On this channel, we talk about home automation, about making living in our homes more enjoyable. And today, let's talk about air quality, how to improve the quality of the air we breathe in. I've got this uh, little sensor from IKEA. It's a very simple device. I'm just take it out of the box. There you go. And it's a box like that. And uh, it's got a little light in front that goes from green to amber to red based on the quality of the air. And it's powered by USB-C connector. So I've got this uh, USB-C cable also from IKEA because I like them. So just plug it in and uh, the light is gonna go from green, amber to red. It's gonna be blinking and after a second it will just uh, stay on the color based on the air quality. It's got air intake from the back and it's green so the air is good so we're all happy and uh, and that's it right so thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one uh, so still green <laughs> it's nice but wait a second where is where is home assistant this uh, channel is about home assistant how do we connect this to home assistant. There is no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi. Let's try to figure out. We can do it better, can't we? So I'm going to search for the IKEA Windringning ESP Home and uh, let's see what we find. So on ESP Home uh, there is a configuration for the particular matter sensor, so that's cool. Uh, there is instructables for uh, adding, making it smart. So adding uh, the ESP32 chip on it, ESP module. So that's cool, but it'll be some soldering. Uh, let's see if we can do better than that. And uh, while browsing through the internet, I found this very interesting article on one of those uh, IT blog sites uh, in Czech Republic in here. And uh, they have discovered uh, a local e-shop that sells components normally or IoT devices, in fact, that created a replacement PCB board that goes inside the uh, IKEA device. Just replace it one to one. Let's uh, go to their site and see. So it costs 498 crowns. Uh, so it's about, um, I don't know, 15 euro. And you just uh, replace it. It's got this ESP32 chip on it. Uh, there's this USB-C connector and it's got those mounts. So it looks like you just replace it one to one and they claim it supports uh, ESP Home. There are some files so I can go to their GitHub. There's a data sheet. I can go to GitHub and in the GitHub which is in uh, English. So this is good news for you. So let's order one and let's the fun begin. So the package has arrived. It's a little box uh, from Laska Kit which means love kid. That's a funny name. Now let's open it. I got my knife and uh, let's cut it open. There you go. There is a little plastic wrap. I just open it. Anti-static pocket. And if I open this one, there's a red PCB, which got uh, ASP32 chip on it, and it's got the USB-C connector. So it looks like I'll be able to just mount it inside this box and replace the one which is there. And then I'll be able to program, it's called ESP Windrightening wind wind version 2.0. Uh, so let's mount it and program it and let's see what it does. Okay, so let's see what we've got uh, in the back. 
there is four screws, so I'll just unscrew them. Okay, now I can open open the box. And what we've got in here is there's a ventilator and the sensor for the particles, and they're connected by uh, two connectors, and uh, they're connected to a PCB, which looks somewhat different than the one uh, from the website, but uh, it's got three screws and a USB-C at the bottom, so let's hope it's gonna, it's gonna fit. So I'm gonna just uh, unscrew uh, the PCB, so it's gonna be easier. Get rid of that. And then disconnect those connectors. One and two. So I don't need this anymore. So I can put it aside. And now I can get this uh, PCB from the shop. And uh, let's see if it fits. So the USB goes in here. And uh, here there is a there is a little tap which I think it has to go under. So let me just so let's secure it with those three screws. And now we have those. Uh, Two cables, two, two connectors. So one is for the fan, so it goes. There you go. That one goes in, and then I have three connectors. So they're called J3, J4, and then there's the sensor. So let's put it in the sensor. So it should go in, and it did. It just clicked, and now it should fit in. The connector looks it's. It's a little bit longer than the previous one, so let's make sure all the cables are in and uh, the USB should go into that hole. Oh, there you go, it does. And I just close it and uh, screw the four screws. So one, two, three, and the, the upgrade is done. At least the hardware part. Now we have to load the software. So we have uh, exchanged uh, this PCB for the one which we purchased. It looks exactly the same. The USB-C comes from the bottom. The box looks the same, but I don't think it does anything right now because we need to upload the software. In fact, there's the adapter for the USB-C now, so I can connect the USB-C to the computer and we can unload the new firmware into the device, but we need to create one first, so let's get started. All right, so I'm on the ESP Home uh, page on my Home Assistant, and uh, so let's try to get it connected. So I'm going to connect the device to my USB port on the computer, and I'm going to say new device. I'm going to continue. I'm going to call it uh, air quality. Next, it's uh, ESP32, I suppose. So next, it created configuration. Uh, I don't want to install it. I'm going to skip and I'm going to edit this thing. Uh, so in here, I have API, OTA, Wi-Fi. I'm going to get rid of all of that because what I have is I have uh, created this uh, those packages in here for the API. Uh, over the air and Wi-Fi that I use in all of my devices. So I'm going to just uh, put this one in front and uh, that should do. So let's install this one. So I'm going to say install plugged into my computer preparing download. Okay. Download project. Let's see. So I'm going to open this web, connect in here, install, choose the file, 
and it's gonna be the one on the desktop install There you go, so it's installed now. So now the device is online um, and uh, I guess we should be able to add it to the Home Assistant even though it should be discovered automatically but I have the IoT devices on different VLANs so I have to do it manually. So I go to Device and Services, ESP Home and it's, gonna, it's what's called Air Quality Local. Let's see. So now let's add the password there we go and it's gonna be in the living room and let's finish it so now it's edit um, I can go and see in the ESP home there is the air quality one device uh, but there is no sensors uh, just uh, that the presence it's, it's currently home anyhow so let's go back uh, to the ESP home page we were looking before for the IKEA this thing and it came with this right so we just copy this part I think it's not only that because we will probably need to add the the fan configuration as well but uh, let's see how it works so I'm gonna just add this one in now for the URT uh, D2 is not recognized for ESP32 uh, looking at this page they have uh, RX is 16 and 17 so let's see uh, RS is 16 and TX pin is 17 I'm gonna save install and I'm gonna do wirelessly now because I can all right so I'm connecting to it and uh, here we go so I have the particle sensor in here it discovered that and uh, let's see uh, if it measures something it's measuring every 20 seconds but as I said I think I will need to have the uh, the fan started for the measuring and uh, so I'm gonna add a switch so it's gonna be a GPIO switch on pin 12 and I'm gonna call it fan and then I need to make a, a uh, automation that whilst it measures it will turn the switch on so I'll have to figure out how to do that so I have the switch in here so I can install this one as well so let's see I'm gonna go to this uh, device and uh, in the ESP home I'm gonna go for air quality I have those two entities so there's a fan I can turn it on and off and the measurement is not measured yet so I guess we'll have to study a little bit so I'm gonna turn the fan off and I'm going to investigate and I'm gonna get back uh, once I know uh, what's the issue right so I got the sensor working turns out it was a mechanical issue I didn't connect the cable properly so let's look at the code uh, so as you can see the particle sensor is the same I only give ID to the asynchronous receiver transmitter but it's a really not important change for the switch I have changed the restore mode to always on so I can then hide it and I don't have to worry about turning it on and off then uh, I have the I2C I don't use it right now but I have configured it anyhow and then there is the light uh, it's the WS2812 which is used uh, in the chip so uh, unlike the standard one from IKEA uh, this one has proper RGB light and we can play with the color so it's quite neat and then uh, for the colors uh, I could have uh, triggered the colors here on the uh, on value so I could have say on value in here and uh, change the colors in here but I want to add the CO2 sensor later on so I want to set the color based on the combination of those two sensors so what I decided to do is I set up an interval and every 30 seconds I'm evaluating uh, the conditions of those uh, of this sensor currently have one so it says if the uh, sensor PM is below 30 
it'll turn on the light with brightness 100%, 100% uh, green color. If it's uh, above 90, then uh, it's gonna go for 100% red. And if it's in between, I will set it to 100% uh, red and 74% green, which is somewhat amber color. Uh, I might play with the intensity of the color to have it less intense at night, but for now I left it at this. Now coming back to the integration, here is the sensor. If I go to the history, I was playing in here. I actually took a candle and I let it smoke, so I was making smoke in the room, so you could see that uh, uh, it was detecting the smoke up until 1000, and then uh, I put the fire off and uh, gradually the room cleaned out and it was three and now it's between uh, one or two and zero, so I guess it's clean. Now, the particles are cool, but uh, well, first of all, it shows only one size, so it's pretty limited. But I also wanted to show the CO2, which was probably more interesting for me. Uh, I went to the website, they were also mentioning they support the uh, CO2 sensor and there was a link to it, so it was probably most convenient. I just click in there and uh, I can purchase this one as well. This one is a little bit more expensive because the CO2 sensors are in generally more expensive, but uh, it's gonna greatly improve from particle matters also to CO2, which is something I always wanted to have. So let's just purchase one and uh, let's see if you can mount it in. Okay, another box from uh, Laska kit just came from the uh, Zasilkovna uh, shop, which is the local uh, delivery service. Just open it and see what's inside. Ah. Another plastic box and uh, And there's a little sensor in there. With this uh, CO2 sensor and a connector that I'll be able to solder in. So there'll be some soldering involved, but I think we can do it because with this we can get CO2 sensor, which is something I always wanted. Okay, so let's take the sensor out of the pocket. Uh, this is the PCB where it's gonna end. So I'm going to first solder the connector to the sensor and then uh, I'm going to solder it to the PCB and hopefully it's gonna fit in uh, the uh, device. So I mounted that in, uh, secured the screws, connected the cables and uh, it nicely fits in so this is great so we just uh, secure the screws to the box and uh, we're done. Next, the ESP Home configuration. Google is my friend. So, it find the configuration in the ESP Home documentation. It's SCD for one sensor. So, I'm just copy the config and uh, paste it in my config file. And uh, I can upload the configuration wirelessly again and it should discover the sensor. Here we go, it's in here. Uh, so I'm gonna go to the integration to the ESP Home air quality and I should see the CO2. And indeed, it's in there, it's measuring 348 particles per million. So what does it mean? Is it good or bad? Again, searching on Google, it looks like uh, it's good uh, until 1000. If it's between 1000 and 1500, I should ventilate and if it's uh, above 1500 it's bad and uh, I gotta do something about that. Uh, so let's take those numbers and let's translate them into the colors on the front uh, of the device. 
And in here I could have gone for the AND and OR conditions, but sometimes these simple solutions are more complicated. So I changed it to a lambda. And uh, so I did for the green. Uh, I set it green if the particle matter is less than 30 and the CO2 is less than 1000. Then, if it's above that, but the particle matters are less than 90 and the CO2 is less than 1500, this is going to be the ember. And finally, if uh, either of the two sensors is above that number, it's going to be red. Now, you don't have to copy the configuration from the screen. I'm going to share a link in the description below. Now, let's just uh, compile and upload it. Now, if I go to the device page, uh, I can further add the sensors to my Lovelace dashboard. Now, I can do it from the device page, but by default, it'll add the entities card, which is kind of useless. So instead, I'm going to add a gauge card and I'm going to configure it with the ranges. So I'm going to add the minimum and maximum uh, that's going to be consistent with the lights on the device. So this is for the particles and uh, let's save it. Then I'm going to add another one for the CO2 and again I'm going to configure the ranges and uh, it will add them to my dashboard. Now I want to take it a step further because I would like to add them to a grid. So I'm going to go to edit my dashboard. I'm going to go to this grid I already have with the temperature and humidity and I'm going to add two additional uh, cells and I'm not going to configure them again. I'm going to just uh, choose manual cards and I will paste the gauge uh, card that I have created previously. Let me just uh, paste it in here. And then the second one. And uh, we are done. So we can now delete the uh, two cards that were created automatically. And with that, we are done. The IKEA device is upgraded and glowing nice green color behind me. It's measuring not only the particles, but uh, also CO2. And uh, I can also see it in Home Assistant dashboard and I can see the value so I can trigger automations from there to uh, send me a reminder to open the window if the uh, quality of the air becomes bad. So this is great. Uh, I hope you haven't uh, found it too difficult. I mean, yes, there was some soldering, uh, there was some configuration in the YAML. So I guess today this is considered advanced, but hey, this is uh, the type of videos I do. So let me know if you liked it and uh, I see you in the next one. Bye.